Hello everyone and welcome to Python programming practice. In this video we're going to be coding up a couple different solutions to leet code number one. So we're just going to start by reading through the problem and then we will code up a couple different solutions for it. So the problem is called two sum. It has a difficulty level of easy. So it shouldn't be too difficult or too long. And let's read the problem description. Given an array of integers, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to a specific target. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution. Okay, you don't have to worry about uh, doubling up or getting the wrong indices, I guess. And you may not use the same element twice. All right, that seems important. Since we, if we're looping through something multiple times, we can't use the same element at the same index twice. And it's giving an example here, given these numbers and a target of nine, because the zero index, which is two, and the first index, seven, those add up to nine, which is the target we would return those two indices. So you turn index zero and one, which are the two numbers that added up to the target of nine. Okay, so that is the problem. So it's not super complicated, but let's go over to the code and we could start out by making some notes here on how we're going to approach the problem. Now we're gonna solve this two different ways. To start off with, we're just going to do a double for, for loop solution, which will essentially will be looping through the list of numbers and then looping through the list of numbers a second time so we can find every single combination of additions between the numbers, and that should find us the solution. It is a brute force solution, though, which means looping through an array twice with a double for loop means it's going to be the runtime is going to be n squared o of n squared which means say if we have an input list of length 100 we will end up doing 10,000 operations with the double for loop so that's something that's generally better avoided if you can manage it but and for our second solution we're going to use a dictionary to make some to store numbers that we see and that should allow us to only have to loop through the numbers once so that will allow us to have a runtime of only o of n instead of n squared so this is the general plan here let's take our notes away and think about how we would start coding up the first solution here. <clears throat> so basically, we need to loop through the data or the number. Let's see here. So we're given the starting code here where we have an input list of numbers and a target. And we need to output a list of integers which are the two indices that add up to the target or store the numbers that add up to the target. So with, for the double for loop solution, we want to start by looping through the numbers. Um, we probably want to loop through by indices because that's what we're returning. So we could say for i, which is index in range, of the numbers, the length of the list. Um, and we don't, we're gonna loop through twice, but we, but we don't want to duplicate anything. If we remember from the problem description, we couldn't use the same element twice, which means we want to avoid having the same index in our hands at the same time. So, We'll set up the loop so that the first loop will go through everything other than the last element. 
and then the second loop will start from i or where the first loop is or i plus one i guess and then only look at things from that index till the end so that will allow us to avoid looking at the same index at the same time and it will cut down somewhat on the total amount of runtime it's still on the order of n squared but it'll be a little bit better so we want to loop through all of the numbers except the last one And then we're going to do another loop for the other index in a range from where our current index is, i. We don't, we don't need to look at ones that we've already seen. So we'll start at i plus 1, which is the next index over in the array. And then we'll go to the end of end of the numbers so go all the way to the end of length numbers and then here's the code that has to check whether the sum of these two numbers is equal to the target so if the number at index i plus the number at index j which are different because we set up the loops that way is equal to our target input we should return a list that is the two indices right so i and j so this should be a working double for loop solution it's not going to be the most efficient but i'm going to click submit here it's saying pending probably cut off for the video but it is judging right now and then I can pull over. Okay, so the solution says it's it passed successfully. The runtime, unsurprisingly, was pretty slow. So about 6,000 milliseconds, and it was only faster than 6% of other Python 3 solutions. So it was pretty slow, but we knew that going in. All right, so now let's go back and try coding up a more efficient solution. So this time we are going to use a dictionary and we're going to store the indices and values that we've already seen. And we can use those stored values to look up and see whether our current value plus anything that's stored will equal the target. And if it does, we can just immediately return what those indices are. And that should allow us to go through the number array only once to find the solution. But we will have to have a little bit more memory usage because we're going to have to store some numbers. But let's see how we do this. Well, first, we need to define just an empty dictionary to store things in. So we'll say scene, which is the numbers that we've seen so far. And now we're going to have to loop through the numbers again. So we'll maybe use enumerate this time because we want the index, but also the number. And we don't need to stop like at any specific point like we did with the first example. We just want to do all the numbers all at once. So we'll just go through everything for index and num in enumerate nums so enumerate gets you both the index and the value at the same time so i is the index num is the value and then so first we need to check whether the dictionary scene contains the number we'd need to add to our current number that makes it equal the target so the number we'd have to add to the current number to get the target would be the target minus the current number. So if the target minus the current number is in the scene dictionary, then we can exit and return the two indices. So let's see here. The, the, second, the second index is just going to be i, because that's what we're looking at. But the first index would be the one we already stored in scene. That means we're going to return the value of the scene dictionary where the key is equal to this number that we looked up. 
and that will give us the index. We're going to have to store that uh, in our else clause. So we're going to, well, it's a list that we have to return. The first element is going to be the value in the scene dictionary associated with this number. And the second index is just i. And then if the target minus our current number is not in the scene dictionary, we need to store the current number and index in scene, at least if it's a number that we haven't seen before. So um, else if our current number is not in scene, so we've never seen our current number before, we will store it. So scene our current number, and this is equals this index. So, so this should loop through every number. If that number plus something that we've seen before equals the target, then we just return it the two indices that made that true. And if not, then we have to store what we're currently looking at in scene. But we're only storing it if it doesn't already exist in scene. I don't know if the problem definition specified whether you can have repeated terms in it. Like in theory, that would be possible, but we don't need to store the same values more than once. Like if they're giving us an array that has several threes in it or something, we wouldn't need to store that more than once. So let's submit this one as well and see how we do. I'm not sure how fast it's going to be compared to other solutions because this website from run to run, sometimes you get pretty different values for your solution speed, but it should certainly be better than the O of N squared solution that we submitted earlier. So let's check on that. All right, it looks like it ran in 48 milliseconds this time, which was a lot faster. I think the first one was around 6,000, and it's saying it was about in the 95th percentile of speed for the Python 3 submission, so that seems pretty good. And the memory usage isn't really too much different than before, and it's actually still less than over half of the submission, so that doesn't seem too bad. Now, of course, there are many different ways you could probably solve this problem. This might not be the most efficient method, but it got the job done and seemed to be faster than most of the submissions that had been sent in. So it seems like a reasonably good solution for that first easy problem on leak code. So keep coding, and I'll see you again next time.